Today I'll teach you how to create photorealistic puddles that take into account the displacements of a material and you can paint down exactly where you want those puddles to be happening. This is going to be a really simple tutorial and the requirements for doing this are extremely low. You basically just need to know a little bit of Blender and that's it. And before we go ahead and start this tutorial, I want to mention that this blend file, like this material setup is in the description. So if you want, you can just skip this tutorial, go down, download the blend file and append the material setup just like you see here on the screen and you will have access to the final result. Uh, so you can just, you know, skip the tutorial if you don't feel like following it. So I recommend you watch it because you're gonna understand how, you know, things work. But if you don't want to do that and just want some puddles, then just go ahead and download the blend file. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is head over to quixel.com. And the reason you do that is because we are going to make use of a product from here that's called Mixer. And don't worry, it's completely free, so just head over here. Uh, and just you know go products mixer and download it install it it's just uh, like any other software so you're not gonna run into any trouble installing that and it's free so you don't have to pay anything uh, so once that's done right you can open up the like the all right so i'm back and i moved over to the other monitor which is uh like a normal hd not a 4k uh, monitor so yeah i think this is better for the, the tutorial at least for this part of the of the tutorial uh, so yeah I just said you make a new project right from here right so you're inside here now you have to create a new mix in order to work on that so just press over here and you can like name it anything you want so I'm just gonna call it mod because we are gonna make a muddy road all right so we end up on this page right here right so this is the plane that we are going to work on this is where we are gonna slap the texture and we're gonna make the, the puddles and whatever and as I said you can either make like a new surface layer right you can add uh, materials from here you can uh, even use your own materials if you wish but for the sake of this tutorial and for speed I'm going to use like something from Quixel and I'm going to use this rocky sand that I've uh, used in the in the thumbnail so just press on that and it's gonna load up the material on this plane and as you can see it looks really really good right so in a, in mixer you already have the displacements uh, applied so that's why everything looks so really really nice so it's not just a flat plane all right so what you want to do right now it's really like two clicks and that's the whole <laughs> the whole idea and then you just have to set up the material and you're ready to go so um right you've got this material and to make it wet to add puddles all you have to do is just go over here and there is like add liquid layer press on that and you've got water you've got puddles on your material and as you can see um the water comes through the ground, right? So uh, the those areas are exposed over the water and other areas are inside the water. And of course, there's a lot of um, parameters you can change, right? You can uh, change the threshold on the surface so we can go over to like minus two and you have like small puddles, as you can see, or you can even go and submerge pretty much everything in, in the water right so you just play around with those with these uh, parameters all right so you've got this you've got the the you know the puddles set in one amazing thing about mixer is that it takes care of the uh, of the tiling problem. So if I press T on the keyboard You can see that it's completely seamless. So what you want to do right now is save up two versions of uh, This exact material. So we are going to save this as it is With the with the puddles in and then I'm going to turn off the puddles like turn off the liquid Layer and I'm just going to save this normal version of the material what you want to do is go over to this export tab over here and then you want to uh, save this 
somewhere and what you want to do is metalness maps here on the preset and then make sure everything is the way you see it over here right and depending on what resolution you want to export you can just change it from here 256 is really low so maybe we go with a 4k put the new directory right over here and maybe let's call this like try and go back to layers and you know just turn off the the visibility for that liquid so we have the normal dry version and just you know hit export once again and wait for the dry version of the texture to just be exported all right so we are now back in blender and we can start doing you know the the actual setup for the material and all that cool stuff so what i'm going to do right now is go shift a and add a plane in here right so i've got this plane i'm gonna multiply the size by two so i'm just gonna press s and two and then uh, control a to apply rotation and scale just so everything is nice and you know normalized I'm going to make a new material for this and call this let's say uh, mud why not and the first thing I want to do is go into edit mode so press tab and then I'm going to subdivide this a bunch of times we can either press W to and have this like pop up in here where you can press subdivide or you can press space and you know search for subdivide it's the same thing so i'll subdivide this a few times maybe like this right i I, re I want a really dense uh topology on this plane because one we need all this detail in order to paint down the vertex data so you know it's vertex painting so you need a lot of vertices to paint on uh, right it makes complete sense and uh, we also we are also going to displace this plane and we need a lot of topology in order to displace properly so you know i've got here like a plane with 8k edges just subdivide that like four or five times and then jump out of uh, edit mode and what i'm going to do is go and actually add a subdivision surface to hit, to this guy which will further increase the amount of faces it has right as you can see we get more and more detail so why did i do the subdivision and then the subdivision as a modifier well because this modifier unless you apply it you don't have like the actual geometry uh, accessible so you don't can do any vertex painting because this amount of topology is not really real unless you go ahead and apply this but we don't want to apply it because we want to be able to control how dense this is once we do the displacements right so the first subdivision the one in edit mode is for vertex data to paint on and then this subdivision modifier is simply for uh, displacement so the two subdivisions play Kind of a different role all right so i'm going to keep this at like maybe two for now right now we are over here and what i want to do next is to apply the material right so let's go into the shading tab over here the wrangler node so if you go edit preferences and type in here wrangler you can just enable node wrangler and once you have enabled node wrangler sorry about that uh, you can just select this principle B BSDF right in this principal node and go control shift T and then you have this like open up and what you want to do is head over to your textures where you save those uh, two versions so I'm going in and I'm going to import the dry version first so I'm going in there and I'm going to choose albedo the metalness the normal the roughness and import them right and what node wrangler does is it's setting up this on its own uh, the only thing i want to do is make this texture a little bit smaller so i'm going to this go to this scale and instead of one just go with two and that's all i want to do for now okay so now that i know uh, the, the subdivision level i want to work with i can go into the shading and what you want to do right now is move this material output a little bit out of the way 
select everything that has to do with the, the dry version and just go Control G. And now it's gonna put that into a group, right? You are now inside the group. So press tab to go outside and all that other stuff is inside of this little node right over here. So I'm going to call this dry, right? I wanna be organized, I wanna know what's going on. Uh, so that's dry, so now let's import the, the wet version. So I'm going to do Shift A and do a search for principled BSDF. So I just want another normal principal shader and I'm going to do the same thing. Click on this guy, Control Shift T and I'm going to go for the wet textures now. So albedo, metalless, normal, you know, the exactly what we've done previously. I'm gonna delete those because I don't like them. Make sure the scale is also set to two because we want to be the same as this dry version. First, you just wanna do this guy, put it in the surface and now select everything and go Control G, tab to go outside and now we, we are good. So I'm gonna call this wet once again and we have the two versions, right? If I go and look at them, you can see we have the wet version and like this is the, the wet stuff. And if I plug in the dry version, we have the dry version with no puddles, exactly what we wanted. So how exactly can we like switch between those? Well, we can use what's called like vertex data, vertex painting. So I'm gonna grab the, the dry version first and I'm gonna go into the solid view and if you go right here on the top left when it says object mode you can scroll down to vertex paint and you are you're gonna be able to paint right you're gonna be able to do this sort of thing so let me turn off the subdivision first because it's gonna move faster so if it if it works laggy a little bit just turn off this icon for the subdivision and it's gonna work a lot faster so the first thing you want to do is, you know, go to top view by pressing seven on the numpad and just take like complete darkness, <laughs> dark material. If you go to hex, you can just type in zero, 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 zero and press enter and you're going to get pure black or just uh, grab this little ball and move it to down. Okay. So I'm going to make this brush a little bit uh, bigger. Uh, you can do that by pressing F and, you know, moving your mouse left and right. And I'm just gonna make this whole plane be dark. And what's gonna happen over here is that wherever there is like this dark color on the plane, we are going to show the, the dry version of the, uh, of the material. And wherever we paint the white part, we are going to show the wet version. So let me make this completely black and then i can just go back to object mode and what you've done right now when you just painted that you created a vertex some vertex data and that vertex data is accessible if you go to this icon right over here and you've got vertex groups shape keys and down here you have vertex color if you do that you will see that you have this one Thing in here which is called call we can just call it wetness if you want right so double click on that and rename it whatever you want i'm just gonna rename it wetness and what you want to do is pretty much we are going to mix be, um, do a mix between those so in here right down here in the in the uh, shading panel we do shift a to add another node and let's search for it just put mix and it, you, you you don't want the mix RGB you want the mix shader right so I'm just gonna put this here with the dry version being in the first input and the wet version being on the second and we are going to use this vertex those vertex colors uh, this vertex data to drive the factor right to tell the computer where we want to show the dry version and where we want to show the the wet version so i'm going to do shift a once again press on the search and do vertex and you're gonna end up with this vertex color right over here and if you press in here you're gonna see the wetness which is this guy over here right so select that and then input the color into the factor and you are 
pretty much done at this point. We just have to do the displacement, but first let me uh, like show you uh, how this guy works, right? So I'm going into the, the material view and you can see we have the, we've got this, um, the drive version. But if I go back into the vertex paint and change the color from pure black to pure white. So just bring this up over here. Okay. So pure white, as I said, and now just watch this. I'm going to paint down with white and then you are going to see the puddles showing up. How cool is that, right? And they take in account uh, the depth of the of the texture, right? So you can see I'm painting over this rock, but you don't get water on that rock because that rock is going to be above the water level and you get the water just on the other side, right? So you can paint puddles just like this, which is really, really cool. Just look at that. I make puddles appear wherever the hell I want. And I've got like super control over it. Right, and now if I want to get rid of some of those puddles, I can just press on that, go back to black, and yeah, we get rid of the puddles. Isn't that great? So I'm going to paint some puddles down, right? Right, especially here in the middle. I'm just going to do like that. Some nice puddles. Right, so we've got some nice water in the, in the middle. And now it's time to take care of the displacement because we want the displacement to do the same thing. I want the displacement of the dry version to be on the, on the dark areas, right? And I want the, uh, the displacements of the wet version to be only on those white areas. So how do we do that, right? I'm gonna go switch back to object mode and let's get back here on the, on the shader setup. And what we want to do, uh, so, as you can see, I'm here over all of my textures and just grab this displacement EXR file and drop it in here. And if you are here, just do the same for the, uh, for the wet version, right? Okay, so now that we have our texture, the wet version and the dry version, switch them up to the color space to be non-color data for both of them. Uh, you wanna do that for every single texture that's pretty much black and white. So what we want to do right now is I'm going to get this dry version selected and go control T, right? And it's going to give me these coordinates. Remember, we have a scale of two over those other guys. So we want to do the same in here, right? Press, uh, make the scale be two. Um, I'm going to do the same for the wet version. So just grab it a little bit down here and do control T and set the scale to 2, right? So now we've got the, the dry version, the wet version, and we need to m switch between them depending on this vertex color. So what we are going to do is pretty much use another mix node, but instead of a mix shader, you're gonna press Shift A, click on search, search for mix and get the mix RGB. Uh, mix should remain on the mix. The dry one should be on the first input, the wet one on the second input, and as before, the vertex color node goes into the factor. And now, if you want to do it, uh, if you want to be organized, I suggest you select those, put them in a group, get out of the group, and this is a dry displacement, and then we do the same for the wet one. So wet this placement, right? and you are now really nice and organized and you have access to every single uh, texture, just like that. So before plugging this into the displacement, we need to add another node. So Shift A, go on search and search for displacement and just you know, get the displacement. You get this color node and put it into the height and then the displacement, you put it into the displacement and now you've got the mid-level and the scale which are uh, open to being modified. The mid-level, you don't want to change that. And that strength value is pretty much this scale value you see in here. So I'm going to put this to 0.1, just like that. I'm going to save the project just to make sure. Okay, so I'm just going to jump into, you know, the, the rendered view and see how this looks. So as you can see, we've got the puddles in the middle 
and the, the dry version on the outside. So pretty much the places where we painted with white, we have the the nice puddles, right? But we don't see any displacements. This is still a flat plane. So what's happening with that? Well, the reason is um, if I jump out of the render view, for this kind of displacement to work, what you need to do is head over to your material, go down here to settings, and you're gonna see surface and then displacement, which is set to bump only. And because it's set to bump only, it only pretty much uses the normal map. So it doesn't do any real displacement. So change that into displacement and bump. And now if we go to render view, we, we should see the, the displacement. And would you look at that? Now we have an actual um, displacement. And if I go back and actually turn on the subdivision, it's gonna look even better. And look at that. You've got puddles, you've got displacement, and you can, you know, go ahead and paint down and update this however you want it. So for instance, if I go right here and uh, just switch to like vertex paint, I can put this to black and for instance here there's a um, there's a puddle over here I can just take it off and it works a little bit slower now because I'm in render view and we are having this subdivision turned on and the displacement is doing its thing right so it's gonna be a little bit slower but you can see I'm painting down in real time I'm taking off the puddles if this is, isn't like creative control, I don't know what is, right? I can do the same and just I, I turn this to white and maybe I want some some puddles right here on the in this area. So I'm going to paint that down and the puddles are going to show up. And you can see the displacement is actually um, updating and the puddles are coming up as actual geometry which is amazing okay so as i said this is a little bit slow if i go off of a, of that i can you know make this whole thing be uh like full of puddles just switch back to the rendered view and get a lot of puddles in here as you can see right and maybe i want to get rid, rid of some of those maybe in that area so i'm gonna paint a little bit of black over there I know you are the artist right and I've just given you like the, the proper tool to you know do this and now it's up to you how the hell you want to use it and make cool art out of it so this is pretty much it this is the tutorial this is how you do photorealistic uh, puddles for free in like 10 minutes I know like this tutorial dragged a little bit because you know I had to like show you every single step so you can do it on your own but once you know how to do this it's a matter of going to sub you know, like quick sub mixer doing a couple of clicks to add the water exporting that bring it over here and what you can do is you don't have to do that material setup every single time so what you can do is pretty much you know you, you already have this setup done right so you can go into the let's say the dry version press tab and just switch those um, uh, th those textures and use other textures so you don't have to do all this setup every single time you want to do puddles right actually you know what I'm gonna save this setup and give you this save file and use it however you want so actually you don't even have to follow this tutorial I just wanted to show you how it's done in case you actually want to do it but what you can do is go down into the description uh, grab the blend file I offer for free over there and then you can go into file append right and you're gonna have this puddle that blend you can press on that and okay it's not working right now because i'm inside that uh that thing so if i were to make a new uh new project like you would right i'm gonna go into file append and i'm gonna go into the puddle and it's gonna open this up what you want to do is go to material and just choose the mud material right and now you have that setup in here so if i do a plane you can go down to the material and just use this mud material and 
that's it. You have access to uh, to the setup. You don't have to do the setup anymore. So once you go and do your thing, you're gonna update this with the the vertex colors from here. And okay, you know what you have to do. Just viewed my tutorial. I don't have to explain that to you again. Like like a three-year-old okay so this was the tutorial uh you can go ahead and either co copy the step by step what i've just done or d just go down to the description download the bled file uh go file append and do like the mod i just showed you and then you'll have access to this just make sure you go into quicksell.com uh download the mixer program to do the first part of the tutorial and you're good fam go make some puddles now <laughs>